welcome to The Wine Glass. And today we're gonna to be talking about cooking with wine. Now, if you go to your grocery store, there is a wine that you can get that's specifically for cooking, which is the one that I have here. It's literally a cooking wine. But did you know you can use any wine to cook? You don't have to use specifically a cooking wine. And today we're gonna to talk about the different ways that you can cook with wine and the different wines that you can use to cook. So first, let's talk about the methods that you can use for cooking. There is reduction sauces, marinades, and deglazing. Now let's talk about reduction. So for one cup of wine, that equals about one fourth of a cup of reduction sauce. So the way that reduction works is you're going to simmer your wine. Now you don't want to cook it too high because then it's going to start, you know, affecting the taste of your wine. You just want to add a nice simmer. Now, you do also want to cook out the alcohol, so you'll be keeping all the flavors of the wine, but none of the alcohol. Yeah, I know that kind of sucks, but it's the safest way to have it. So if you have any miners eating, you don't have to worry about them getting a little woo. So it does take about an hour for alcohol to cook out of the wine, so make sure you do take your time when you are cooking a reduction sauce. Now let's move on to marinating. When you go to marinate, you're gonna be using two parts wine, one part fat, and seasoning. That way you can go ahead and use any wine. What it does is that it tenderizes the meat and kind of starts breaking down the proteins. Now, what matters with marinating is how long you marinate for. For example, fish and chicken can range anywhere between 15 minutes to 45 minutes, but if you're cooking like a brisket, you might wanna marinate that overnight. Remember, the longer you marinate, the more broken apart it's gonna be and the softer and easier it is to tear apart the meat will become. So it's perfect for brisket, but you don't exactly want your fish just kinda of like falling apart like that. So depending on how long you marinate, it's gonna depend how soft the meat becomes. Now let's move on to deglazing. Now if you follow me on Instagram, you know recently I was cooking a traditional Cuban dish called carne con papa and I actually used deglazing in that cooking session. Now the way that deglazing works is that on the bottom of your pan if you're cooking meats and stuff like that, you're going to have what's called fond on the bottom and it's these nice delicious brown bits and then what you do is you add your cold or room temp wine, it's just introducing a cool liquid to a hot pan and what it does is it lifts up all those brown bits so it's great for if you want to start making a sauce that you can baste your meats in and stuff like that so you add the wine in and it removes all of those brown bits it doesn't get rid of them but what it does is it incorporates it in the wine and just makes a delicious sauce from that so let's talk about the different types of wines you can use for cooking. So let's start with our dry whites and dry reds. So that is used for meat stews, cream butter, wine sauces, cream soups, things of that nature. And you can use wines like Pinot Grigio, Chenin Blanc, Alberigno, which right here I have a Pinot Grigio. But you can also use red wines like Pinot Noir. So I have Pinot Grigio and Pinot Noir here. This Pinot Noir is actually the wine that I used to make that carne con papa the other day. And let me tell you, it came out so good. You had all these excellent notes from the actual wine. You got these great flavor profiles that added wonderfully with the meat. And let's go ahead and move forward to our next type of wine, which is going to be our nutty and oxidized wines. So those are going to be really good for chicken, for pork, if you're making like a very rich fat, fatty fish, kind of like halibut, if you're going to be making shrimp and stuff like that, that's gonna be a great wine to cook with and that is gonna be like your marsala, your sherry, your orange wines. Those are gonna be the wines that you wanna use if you want to have a little bit more of a nutty, oxidized kind of flavor in your food. A very famous dish, chicken marsala. Absolutely famous in Italian dishes, Everyone loves chicken marsala and that uses marsala wine. Now we're gonna move on to our last kind of like bracket and that is going to be desserts. So your dessert wines, your really sweet wines such as your port that I have here, your ice wines, your late harvest Rieslings, 
All of your sweeter wines can be used to make sauces and syrups for your desserts. So it goes really great with any desserts that have nuts in them, caramel, vanilla ice cream. Those are all going to be great ways that you can use your sweeter wine in your cooking. Now, if you guys do use wine in your cooking, please go ahead and tag me in your pictures or send them to my Instagram. Um, I'm going to go ahead and leave my Instagram right here so you guys can send that to me. I'd love to see what you guys make with yours. And if you want to see a picture of what my final product of my carne con papo was, let me know down below. Go ahead and leave a like or a comment and I'll go ahead and post that on my Instagram so that you guys can see how my food turned out. So I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, please like, comment, and subscribe. I hope you have a fun time cooking with wine. And remember, never cook with a wine that you wouldn't want to drink yourself because it's always nice to have a glass of wine while you cook. So please drink responsibly and happy drinking.